Hi, I'm Okira Banks, costume designer, designer, and stylist to the stars. The fashion industry is more than who's wearing what. It's attitude, personality, and a lifestyle. It's a vibe. And in the Style Lounge, we get into it all. Your favorite guys and girls will sit on my couch and share their real stories as it pertains to their connection with fashion and how it shapes their work and life. And I want you to join us. Welcome to the Style Lounge. Get comfortable. Get comfortable. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Okira Banks, and welcome to the Style Lounge. I am really excited about this next guest. She's a good friend of mine. She's an Emmy winner. Her name is Tamara Braun, but most importantly, she's my friend. But I want to get a little fancy for her, just a little fancy. So one thing that I've been doing during COVID is my own makeup. Now, I'm not a pro, but I know how to do my one, two, three. So this is what I do. I start with concealer. I like this. Okay, this is not any promo or anything, but I just like NARS. NARS um, concealer. Why? They got the right color for me. So I do a little something under my eyes where I want to get a little fancy. I use my fingers just to blend it in like that. I know some of you guys are like, that's not the right way. Well, that's the way I do it. I'm not a makeup artist. So other than that, I do that, and it may not be in the right order, but that's okay, I make it happen. <laughs> I don't do eyes first. I do foundation, I put it on my hand. I take my beauty blender. I just blend down to make myself look fresh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so there's that, and then I cheat because I don't have an eyeliner pencil. So I use this Bobbi Brown eyeliner, but it's a gel. So I water my brush and then I attempt, <laughs> when I say attempt, I attempt to do my eyebrows. Just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. little blend in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I wet this again. So good, all right? <laughs> but that's all right, I'll be cute. I'm gonna be real cute. So, um, I take this and use it for what it's for. That's my step. Mm -hmm. Give you a little eye pop, not too much. Just want to keep it natural. So then, after that, my friends be telling me, little blush, oh, little blush. So, I'm going to put on a little blush. All right. I don't like a lot of blush because I start feeling like a clown. Like, really like a clown. So. And then I do use my contour powder. So this is what I'm gonna do so I don't look so shiny. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, for the big kaboom. You know what the big kaboom is? This lip gloss, I got it for a dollar. I just wanted a little shimmer. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And honey, I hope I look cute because that's it. I just want to look natural. I just want to look easy. This is a part of what I do. And now, with that being said, let's get going so we can interview Tamara Braun. So Tamara Braun, welcome to the Style Lounge. Thank you. <laughs> My OTG essentials. <laughs> yes, wearing her OTG essentials. You guys check it out. So, um, first, I want to say she's more than a daytime Emmy actress and have been nominated two times, right? Nominated three. Three, three times? times? Three times? Okay. One of those nominations I was a part of, and she got best dress. <laughs> and, and, when, and, when, and when I presented, <gasps> yes. That was Favorite. We're gonna talk, we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk. <laughs> She's an amazing, amazing actress. She's an amazing actress. She's very humble about that, but you are. I've shared with her my journey, even when I began this, you remember. Um, you, sat in my, you sat right here in that chair right there. Right. And we talked about it. She, she, like a little she is my sister. I love you and I'm so happy to have you on the Style Lounge with me. Um, I think this is the perfect time 
when I met her, um, I was working at General Hospital as a costumer, and she was the leading lady on General Hospital <laughs> called Carly. Carly. I think when I started working on set, that's how our relationship built. Me Absolutely. working on set. Well, we connected. We just connected. We just connected, and I had already been working there. I started off in stock, then I started prepping, and then it was like they were cross training, and they were like, do you want to work on set? I'm like, yeah, I never worked on set. So General Hospital, shout out to them for meeting my sister friend, giving me the best training um, before I went out into the world of television and film. It's the best training ever. Um, it is for so many things. I mean. It's the best. I mean, it's quick. it's quick. We did 42 scenes a day, and it prepared me to become a costume designer where I went off to do movies for Sony and television shows and blah, blah, blah. Like you flew the coop and you just keep Didn't that the coop? Ah. Um, But the biggest part was um, having the honor of having you let me dress you. Oh, I was in time. I was the honor. That was the first time I ever dressed. You were my first client, like, That's who let me dress bad. them and you were... You were... Well, I was presenting. Presenting. Yeah. You were presenting. Yeah. And we oh, killed it. God. You were wearing a white dress by Lloyd Klein and the coat. So down, but I remember like, I was like, it's too low, we have to close it up. <laughs> I was like, no, it's not. We took it, we took it up to a space that I felt comfortable with. Cause you know, you I have, love- You have a good body. Thank you. I you love, always I don't like overt too much, you know? So people, let me tell you about Tamara. Let me tell y'all about Tamara right now, Miss Tamara Braun. She has one of the best bodies ever, has for years, does yoga. I met you, you probably was one of the first people who like really was into yoga like that. And I was like, oh, maybe I should go stretch. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, so guys, I dressed her, but that was by the time we started building a relationship on set and laughing and it was very uh, easy. It was just, it was just what it was and can I just say you have been, on top of people not knowing she's the very first actress, celebrity, anybody I had ever dressed and trusted me. Um, it showed us that we were friends because we had our moments. <laughs> yeah, we had our little fun moments. Oh yeah, oh, well that's the thing. Well, I think that's why we became friends. Well, you reminded me of a dear friend of mine. I told you that from the get go. Which is, which I love Marcy. Like that's, that's now, that's my girl. You, you introduced me to her and she is so bomb. And I've, she's bought pieces and I love her husband. I've helped him get dressed. So they, they're, they're part of the pack. Yes. But you reminded me of her, so I was like, I was like, she is so blunt and so real, and for whatever reason, like you felt you could be with me, be that way with me from the start, and I loved it. You know, I was like, oh, she's just so real and down to earth and cool, and you reminded me of one of my best friends in the world, and I was just like. And I remember I was dressing you for something. We were doing something for Soap Digest. They wanted to do a big spread on you. And that was the first time we had our, because we had now, we had our relationship. Uh -huh. We had our relationship. What happened? what happened? Did we fight? We did fight. <laughs> and I remember saying, stop being so picky. You're like, I'm not being picky. And I was like, and I don't know how we, we moved on so quick. I probably was being picky. You were. You were like, this is doing this. I'm like, if you don't stop, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> but it made the friendship even sweeter. And then she just became my sis. You have literally walked with me through my journey. You have. From me starting the line, from me starting a line and not even knowing what the, um, what was it? I did the, um, what was the beauty day? Remember you came to in Beverly Hills? Which really start, which really catapulted the clothing line. I still have all those pictures. You gotta share them with me. I will share them with you. I have all, there's a picture of me and you talking. That's like the best picture. It was like the, the beginning. You've come to the pop-up shops. You've let, you, people don't know, you've heard me cry when I was like, I think I gotta, I gotta make myself, I gotta use my voice. <laughs> And such a wonderful voice you have. Really. You should just be doing like, doing voiceover work all the time. Are you serious? I do yeah. not like my voice. Uh, I think I sound like, <laughs> I think I sound, I can't even hear this that long after this. 
I always think I'm talking because you know I talk fast. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm always talking fast and I feel like a rabbit. I sound like a rabbit. <laughs> what a rabbit's what I a rabbit sounds like. I was like, I'm talking through my nostrils and then people go, you have the best voice. I'm like. Especially when you're relaxed because then it's just so like red. Oh, it was sexy, yeah. I didn't yeah. know that, I didn't know that. I just wanted to have you on because I wanted to share a little bit of our friendship because we've never done that. What else have you been doing during COVID? Yeah, you know, I think like, well, I guess I shouldn't say like everyone else because everyone's doing it differently, but um, I've been trying to stay inside as much as possible. I mean, I have my dogs and I take them for walks. I'm really grateful for that because it gets me out. You, know, you, get, some, out. you get to breathe some fresh air. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fresh air. You know, I've, I, just staying in and being grateful, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm, gratitude. I'm practicing gratitude on a daily basis. And it's, I think it's really helping me because look, I'm, 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 I'm blessed, I'm fortunate, and I need to remind myself of that. Yeah, this is kind of a, it's a bizarre time, but I'm not sick. No one close to me has been sick. People close to I have experienced people I'm that. close with are, have gotten sick and have died, unfortunately. Um, I mean, you know, my dear friend's mother got it. You know, but it's like I, I've not. I've been fortunate that it hasn't touched me. It hasn't affected your your life, your people around you, or you. Right. I mean, and even when it does, it's just it's mild. Thank goodness, it's mild. Right. But. I mean, there's so many people out there who are dying and I just, I have a, I just feel like it's a really simple thing to be asked to do, to take care of our brothers and our sisters. I try to respect people's opinions and points of views, but I really think that there's, this isn't, it's not an issue to be about yourself on. It's that we are supposed to be our brother's keepers. We're supposed, we're supposed to be that. neighbors. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of us still aren't understanding that, unfortunately, because I think we have been molded into grinding and I got to get it. Mm -hmm. And with this time, with everyone I've been talking to so far, um, self-care, a lot of gratefulness and gratitude. Um, That's the way I think you get through it. And look, I mean, you, you, and there's and so many opportunities right now. Yeah, yeah. And rising up for each other in places that you can. Yeah, and, for, and and when you're talking about the grind, everybody's, you know, trying to hustle and do their thing. I know it can be like a halting thing, but so much can come out of this too. This is a beautiful time. This is a really beautiful time. We'll never, like I told people, we will never get this kind of time again, maybe in our lifetime, maybe again, but not right now. And I feel like God gave us time back. Is it uncomfortable? Yes. It can be. It forces you to stretch and extend past yourself. Yes which we need to anyway, right? I mean, I think this opportunity though, this downtime, it's still even really good for people who are like hustling and trying to get things going. Strategizing. There's so much, there's, there's, there's so much like, there's so much ingenuity coming, you know? People are able to come up with great ideas. I, I think they're, they're able to do their best. I really think people are able to do their best. Like really, <clears throat> really do what they never could do before because they didn't have time because they were working for other people. Some, some of us. But there's opportunity. Like, look, you're still doing your style lounge. It's called, you know, how can how can I go ahead and try something new and make a situation that may not seem optimal and ideal work for me? And you do it. So, so I have a question for you. We're gonna switch gears. You have decided to leave General Hospital for a second time. Well, I didn't leave. They wrote me off. Oh. <laughs> She's like, the first time though, I left. <laughs> first time I left. So you got your Emmy. I got my Emmy for it, yeah. So I was off the show, but I got the Emmy. So that was nice. Okay. <laughs> you like, thank you for my flowers. Okay. <laughs> and I feel like you're doing movies now. I just finished a film um, uh, in right before the pandemic hit, actually. We wrapped probably two weeks, I think maybe two wow, weeks. Maybe good. it was a month, three three-ish weeks before lockdown. Um, so that was fun. That was an independent film where I play the lead. We'll see what comes of that. So you've been in this industry now for how long? Oh, I started in Chicago when I was 19 years old. So how, how many uh, years? <laughs> Just tell me years, not your age crazy. <laughs> how many years? I'm doing this for gosh, 30 years now more. It's, it's so since you were a toddler 
And so <laughs> since that time, now that we are in this season and we people are like this is 2020 is the worst. I'm like, no, this is 2020 vision. This is clarity things to be revealed in every area of every genre of business. And I wanted to talk to you about how do you feel? And I know how you feel because I know you love people. You love human beings. How do you feel about the highlight of diversity having to be pushed in film and television? Because I know when I came to General Hospital, I was the only spot there throughout the whole department. It's about time. It's what I say. I'm I'm really said. I mean, I've always wondered what the hell is going on. Why isn't there more diversity? Why is, I mean, look, soap operas are a great opportunity to have it because I mean, so soap operas from like the beginning of time have always been about so and so sleeping with so and so and blah 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 and she didn't and da, 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 and you know and children coming out of the woodworks from the past and I mean what a beautiful opportunity to mix cultures up and what I mean like it would have been I mean for so many years it's like it's it's the perfect platform. It's the perfect platform. I said that soaps and the runway have become definitely more co colorful in this time. Because I remember when I was at General Hospital, do you realize from the wardrobe department, because I was the only steady person. There was one girl in hair and makeup and she came sometimes, but she wasn't steady. I don't remember her name. But between the actors, the crew. The directors, the producers, everything you know. I came and I was the only one who was there for like two years off and on. And then, then I became like their go-to. Yeah, you know, do you know that um, Michelle Valjean, uh, a black woman, was the only sh head writer on a soap ever of a woman of color? No. Yeah, only one, and she was she was actually at GH. Uh, um, she was the head writer then, before I got there. Or maybe it was just a little bit of overlap. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean. It's, it's kind of crazy. It's crazy. You know, I mean, like, even in hair and makeup, I mean, GH really, back in the day when we were on, I don't think we had, we had Taggart, oh. we had, you know, Rial who plays Taggart, who else do we have? We really didn't have, I mean, we didn't have a storyline for people of color, no. we do now. So no, I wanted to know how did you feel about that? You know, I, that that's really important. I know you always rooted for that. I know when things started getting crazy, we talk we talked about you know hoping people didn't get desensitized to what was happening to yeah. men of color, and you like I hope not. And then we now we have this beautiful awakening, not just because COVID. Well, I think COVID made people sit down so they couldn't get distracted anymore. Yeah, I mean, and, and everything with the with social unrest. I mean, it's it's hor you know horrible with George Floyd and and Ahmad and Elijah and Brianna and I mean, it's just I mean the list goes on, right? I mean, too long of a laundry forever. list. It goes forever that people aren't even aware of. But thank goodness now, COVID made us sit at home and watch the news and, and not be distracted. No movies, no ball games, no work. You just gotta figure it out. And people had to pay attention to things that they normally wouldn't pay attention to because of what you're saying, you know, the life, life shut down. Life made us listen. I feel like we got time back. I hope so. Because we had no choice. Yeah, I mean, and I think, so you're asking me, right? Like, you know, what do I feel about it? I feel it's, it's a good, it's, it was a t it's the time, right? I mean, if we can't look at the fact that there's, cruelty, there's police brutality and disproportionate numbers. And you know, I mean, I don't understand. I just have such a, such a very, very difficult time when people say all lives matter, when people are saying black lives matter. I mean, I just don't understand because no one's saying anybody's better, anybody's worse. Someone told me my family's Cuban and then I got people who are black. So all lives matter. I said, no. It's, yeah, yes, all lives do matter, but it's not the appropriate response when someone you. No one's not literally intimidated by you so much that they want to lynch or kill you. Well, yeah, it's privilege. I mean, people don't like that word. Oh, white privilege. It's just, there. There's we all have privileges. Rich yeah. people have privileges over poor people, whatever color they are. You know, I mean, I, 
people who smart people have privileges over people who are not so blessed in that in that area you know beautiful people have privilege over people who are not necessarily perceived that way and if we can't look at that and say yes we were given that and for for no other reason than how we look or how the brain works or you know but mostly about how we look because we're talking about black lives matter right. issues i mean if, if you cannot take a look at yourself in the big scheme of life and take an honest look then i don't know what we're doing here you know we're supposed to be here again for others to 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 support one another to love one another we're on this planet to be of service no one, no one's ever supposed to need, but to be of service. And with that being said, yes. um, what else do you have going on? Well, okay. So work-wise, um, I've been doing special corresponding with Extra TV, which is a lot of fun. I love it and want to continue doing that. Um, work-wise, there's something in the works right now that I can tell you when we get off of here, but <laughs> I can't say until, you know. I know that the ink, I get it. Um, but um, yeah, in terms of, you know, in terms of humanitarian work, I mean, I, it can always be done. I've always supported this organization called um, Therapeutic Living Centers for the Blind. They're in Reseda. They work with blind and multiply disabled children. We, I think you knew about that when I was on GH the first time around. And, um, and there's an organization called The Real Bark, and they do work saving animals, dogs. Right. Animals. Yeah, you've been doing that for a while. You've been. Yeah. And um, but there's also the Tanzanian Children's Fund which I like to support, but you know, there's so many incredible organizations right now, mostly it's, it's donating money and getting awareness out because I can't be so hands-on because of, because of COVID. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, I think there's always, there's always things you can do. I mean, if you have a, an extra, you know, five, 10, 15 bucks that always helps. And the same thing, you know, I've, I've gotten involved with, um, you know, with grassroots, and with, with uh, Sean King's organizations, you know, I mean, there's so many, you know. You know I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you're a woman of service. And so, you know, it's just about, I think, when you can't, when you can't do and show up because of the time, because of the pandemic, you can still create awareness on social media. You can create awareness through your network of friends and family. Mm -hmm. You can continue to get the word out and do, do what you can. Yeah. You know? There's something you can do, time, money, or... Um... What's the word? Awareness. awareness and share. Share the information. There's all those different, all those different things. So, yes. we don't have much time. Okay. We could do this for an hour. I know. We just have to hang out. We just need to do like a girlfriend moment. But that we may have I to. I thought this was a girlfriend moment. What do you want to know? It is a girlfriend moment. But I mean, one where we can talk about everything, and it could be like uncut. <laughs> it could be drinks. Drink. Be drinks. We drink so much. <laughs> It'll be like more greens. I have to drink I've, been detox. Really I've been being really healthy and I started a plant based diet, but that's something I'll tell you later. Yeah, since like top of January. I'm sure you're feeling better. Amazing. Yeah, and there's so many plant based, amazing like food. I've been making great dishes. Well, we'll definitely have to swap recipes. And oh, then, I don't know what you feel about like. You know, there's so many lines now, so many vegan, plant-based, you know, sustainable fashion lines and... Well, I, well, I'll tell you what, I have been looking at doing more modal fabric because it is um, eco-friendly. Good. And bamboo, but I like the modal a lot more. So you'll be seeing that. Oh, good, good. <laughs> These are small batches, so you're not creating a huge, you know, huge waste, which I love. No, you know, during this time I've been doing pre-orders and anything I know a lot of people like, like the swag jag and the hoodie swag, those pieces are coming back up from the clothing line. So I see, I see you got, and the jumpers, those have been selling like hotcakes. Because they're amazing. So I want to say thank you for getting the word out and getting on your thread of friends and, and telling them to buy OTG Essentials. Listen, Okira, I cannot go out wearing this. And, and it's got this fabulous back. Look at that back. Look at that back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I cannot go out wearing this and not have people ask me who makes Yes. Who makes this? So I'm constantly, I'm like, it's, it speaks for itself. It does. It's easy. And it's good fabric. And you've had it a couple of years. So it's, it's proven. 
I know. I want another one in black, and I want another one. Um, <laughs> the camo one too. Okay. What are you gonna ask me a question? Go on. What size are you? Extra small. You do extra small. I don't know. I'll look into. Okay, it. text it and let me know so I can make sure because I do have to give the order to her once I leave. <laughs> once we're done with this, that's my next job. Um, well, I wanted to say um, you are more than an actress. You are a beautiful human being. That's why I had to talk about, and you are. Um, I thank you for being a good friend and being a part of my journey. Thank you. And having fun with it and us having our real talks. And when you when we feel each other, we pop up and we go. And um, I want people to find out how to find you for those who don't already know how to find you because you do have a lot of people who already know where you are. You have a website? No, so I, I'm, I have a, I'm on Twitter and I'm on Instagram. Bye. Facebook goes and really, I don't know. I probably should get back on it, but I have lost my password. It's been two and a half years and I have no desire to get on it. Tamara Braun. Tamara Braun. So I'll just Tamara Braun. <laughs> She's like, A-R-A-B-R-A-U-N. <laughs> Follow her, Tamara Braun, across the board. Thank you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you.